Chris Charlton. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm actually a Drupal author. I have at least one book out right now about Drupal. Um, I also do some video stuff and a lot of articles for like Adobe. Um, and in fact, if I have to open code, you guys might see something that I am not going to say what it is. But if I have to open code, I ask that none of you say that you saw it tonight, Adobe related. Uh, why did I bring that up? Because uh, Drupal 7 themes do have a little bit of code involved. Uh, we're not going to be diving into the code, but I might have to open a file if somebody asks me a question and it's worth me opening it. <coughs> CS5. Okay, uh, so Drupal 7 <laughs> themes, part one. So I'm going to do this over for the next couple meetings. I'm going to be breaking it down. Tonight is really oriented at the designers and the kind of, not the top level stuff per se, but kind of the first level of information you need to know about Drupal 7 themes. So if I go too fast, I'm sorry, my slides are uploaded. And you can geek out with me after the meeting when everyone's hanging out for the network session at the end. Okay. Um, so the first thing added to Drupal 7, and it's Drupal 7 in general, but it also really affects themes, jQuery 1.4. This is the latest and greatest version of jQuery. It's now built into Drupal 7 core. Also, jQuery UI. So we have a bunch of like cool little sliders and all these fancy kind of carousel things uh, that are involved with the basics of jQuery UI. Um, so expect to see much fancier module administration pages and stuff. Uh, version 1.8 is the latest and greatest out uh, of the big stable branch. So these are added to Drupal. Stark is the new Zen. Um, for those that don't know, Zen is a plain white vanilla kind of base theme that you can build your themes on top of. It has a lot of the markup ready for you, a lot of the CSS pretty plain and basic. Um, Stark uh, is the new Drupal 7 theme that takes on the stuff that Zen provided as a separate theme and now Stark is the built-in Drupal 7 plain white vanilla theme that you get to build all your, uh, all your themes on top of if you choose to do so. Uh, so again, it's based on the Zen framework and it is new and uh, it, it, it allows you to create CSS only sub themes. So if you're like, I don't want to touch any PHP, I don't want to touch any templates, I like this two, three column layout. I just want to add my colors and graphics. Start allows you to build right on top of and not have to install anything external from Drupal. Okay, make sense? Uh, the box template file, box.tpl.php is gone. Thank God, finally. It's useless. It's old. It's done for. It is fully removed. Um, the blocks uh, within Drupal now have much more uh, meaningful IDs to them. So in Drupal 6, we had blocks like block hyphen search hyphen zero. Yeah, that means a lot to me. Now it would be uh, block search form. Okay, if that makes sense. Um, for the user login form, the little block, you know, username, password, uh, instead of block user zero, it's now block user login. Tons of these changes have happened. Okay, so every, blo every block that was provided in core has gone through this change. Um, if you, there is a, a link at the end that has uh, like kind of the long ass page of changes from Drupal 6 themes to 7. Um, That's where I found some of this information on. They have the whole list of all the modules and what their IDs have changed to. Okay, so your CSS will have to change. The clear block class, it's a CSS class that people use to uh, kind of help divs and get a platter, kind of clear left and rights. Uh, now it's called clear fix in Drupal 7. Okay, so that's CSS. Uh, the search box, uh, it's been moved away. Uh, now it's actually a, a, a standard block that you get to move around. Um, you don't just check a box that says add search to my site, and then it just appears up in the top area somewhere. Uh, now it's actually a block, so you can put in left, right, footer, wherever makes sense for you. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. I, uh, yeah, cheesy. Uh, primary and secondary links are now renamed to main and secondary menu. So as we see in these uh, couple lines of PHP code, uh, instead of primary and secondary underscore links, now it's main underscore menu, secondary underscore menu. Okay, so update your themes accordingly. Unrendered taxonomy links are now unavailable to a node template file. Some people like to use this. It was uh, the PHP variable called taxonomy. Um, a lot of people thought that would give them their taxonomy. It does, but it's kind of unfiltered and it's a security risk to kind of deal with that and manipulate it sometimes. 
So now everyone's just sticking with just terms in Drupal 7. Um, terms is available in Drupal 6, okay? but now in 7 only terms is really uh, allowed. The footer message, I don't know if you guys remember, but in your site information administration, you can put a little footer message so people put their copyright info or something like that. And it comes at the really way bottom. But then sometimes it appeared above the footer blocks that you, and you're like, how does that happen? Um, so now all that's just kind of pulled out. No more footer message. Um, and in fact, you actually should be overriding or putting a block in the footer region now to handle that type of a message. The help variable has now become an official region. If you're not familiar with theme regions, I definitely recommend you check out my linda.com video training series. Covers regions. But uh, now the help variable is actually still using page TPL, but there's an official region. So if you're setting up themes from scratch, uh, then you should declare this help region. So when you have help text appear for the page or something, uh, this is the region it's going to appear in. And of course, that's the PHP variable it would uh, show up as. Before, there was just a help variable, just generally available to page.tpl. Now that it's an official region, uh, we can do some much more fancier things with it. Uh, you can move it around if you really wanted to. Um, another thing is that you wouldn't be expecting your page template to just have a help variable. Uh, since it's a region, you can uh, now start supplying other blocks into that area. So if you really wanted maybe, say, a much more graphical type of help message, uh, then you can have a custom block appear in that region, and it would literally overwrite all that help message if you really wanted it to. So. Mission statement has been removed. Now there's this highlight region. I really think highlight sucks um, <laughs> as a term. Um, and I'll tell everybody the same at DrupalCon. But now there's an official region called highlight. Yay. Um, I mean, you can make as many regions as you want in a Drupal theme. Um, so you could technically have just come up with your own highlight. I actually am just not a fan of the name highlight. I, I'm not a fan of mission statement either. I don't think any of those should exist. But you know, maybe some people will be like, hey, where's mission statement? Oh, it's highlight. Oh, OK. So yeah. Can you carry on these dialogues with yourself off? I'll take them. Come on. I do the voices too. Um, <laughs> The content variable in page TPL, um, well, now it's not just the content well area that it would assume, uh, that Drupal can use to assume uh, content will appear in. Now it is a de facto region. So you do need to declare content in your themes. So we see here regions. This is like a theme info file. Uh, I have content. This is used for kind of, um, it, it, it's, it's not to really hinder your theme development practices, but it's supposed to keep a standard. So imagine if somebody downloaded a new free theme, uh, maybe say from Acquia and done by TNT, and a lot of the defaults have content um, uh, in consideration. Well, if your custom theme had everything besides content you know, used for its layout, what happens when somebody switches over to a, a much more generic theme uh, from your content theme? So that's why content is now required, it's mandatory. So if somebody were to change the theme from a really wild custom theme, it would, Drupal would at least know where to put all the main content uh, into a center well. So it, again, it's not to hinder your themes, it is just a requirement and it's really for compatibility, uh, the fact that people can install multiple themes. I think it makes sense, so I'm not gonna bitch about this. So, oh, excuse me, sorry. Don't uh, Are you cool? <laughs> all right, deal's cool everybody, he's fine with it. Okay, uh, closure region now is called page bottom and page top. Um, technically, I think for closure, uh, page top is not needed, but Drupal has this kind of balancing uh, and its names of variables. So because they created page bottom for content, they also figured they needed to have page top. Um, so yeah, these variables available, page bottom again takes over for closure. For those that don't know what closure is used for, um, how many use like Google Analytics or some kind of like JavaScript at the bottom of the page? Okay, that's usually stuff that's, that doesn't render anything, so it's got to be at the very, very, very bottom of the page before the body closes. So, close in, uh, you know, page is closing, that's why we had closure. You always had a closure variable that allowed these kind of invisible pieces to shove their code at the bottom. Um, that's why now it's been changed to page bottom, and technically page top had to follow along with this new naming convention. Left and right are no longer left and right by default. Now they are sidebar first and sidebar second. 
Uh, so Drupal is getting much more into um, better semantics, better naming conventions. So people that um, used um, left, I'm sorry, right to left translations of websites uh, that be like uh, Arabic languages, I remember, um, some Middle Eastern, um, and basically left and right didn't make sense to them. Well, it just didn't make sense globally, I should say, I'm sorry. So sidebar first and sidebar second make, make much better sense to a themer. Uh, this is actually gonna help a lot of those international sites um, build up from Drupal and not really see any complaints. Carrie, yes. Yeah, basically, you know, sidebar first and sidebar second, if you're right to left, then sidebar first is on, yeah. on the right, you know, it's, it's, it's where it's otherwise we're locked in. Or if you have sidebars running to each other. Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever you want to do in your design, now it's sidebar first, sidebar second, you can make one fatter than the other, it doesn't matter, that's design stuff. Um, the CSS ID is changed also, so it's no longer uh, left, right, um, I think it actually is just sidebar hyphen second, sidebar hyphen first. Um, if I remember right, yeah. Um, for blocks, for people who are editing block templates, uh, the block variable is really just an object. So when you wanted to have the content printed out, you had to use this convention. Now, woo, they went with a standard just content variable for the content. Yay, follows every other template in Drupal. All right, I don't know what took so long. Um, there's two new sets, uh, I'm sorry, there are now two sets of variable processing um, uh, kind of uh, periods, functions. So a lot of us, if you're experienced with advanced theming, a lot of us are, uh, know about the pre-process functions. Pre-process functions allow you to affect things with code before they're even sent to the display, before they're even sent to render. So you can really tweak the variable, tweak some markup. Now there is a process function, uh, or I'm sorry, a process stream of functions that actually fire after the pre-process functions have, ha uh, have gone off. So if you're maybe running a pre-processed tweak to a module you downloaded and you see that the module keeps doing what you, know, you don't want it to do, you now have a second phase that you can step in and say, okay, fine, after pre-process, I want you to change that variable to be X, Y, Z. And that's a whole other area in the, in the theme layer now that we get a chance to do that. Templates have a variable for CSS classes now called classes underscore array. And uh, to show that off, I have this little snippet uh, that I got from Drupal.org. And basically, if we see this variable, bars, classes, array. And since it's an array, I can add to it. So I'm adding a new class to this template, whatever it is, uh, called new hyphen class hyphen to hyphen add. Not really fancy, but I want to get the picture across. What that's going to do is now in my node template file, instead of having all these crazy classes in the templates, uh, how many how many edit no template files. How many tweaked the template file? Okay, so some of you might remember this offhand, but I mean, there was like class equals node, space, node hyphen, and the node ID. I mean, there were all these individual classes that would appear in the template. Now they actually just get compressed to a variable called classes uh, built from this classes array. So what it is, it's, it's for cleanliness for, of code. We don't have to go in and manually add these classes anymore. Now, through code, we can register away from the template, hey, uh, by the way, when you reach that note template, I want you to add these other classes to the string um, before we have to go in and literally add them by hand sometimes, and that was a real big pain in the butt. See, I said butt instead of ass. <laughs> <laughs> good thing you didn't say ass. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> Theo's cool, he says he's got it. It's all good. <laughs> Um, so, uh, all templates can now print out dynamic attributes. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, this is really kind of uh, geeky theme layer stuff. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, when you have an HTML tag, like a div tag, uh, you have the ID attribute of the div, the class attribute, and then you have anything else that you might, you know, appear in the div. Well, now we can, uh, through code, collectively add different attributes. By default, though, the templates have to have ID and class established. Remember the slide before? We had the classes array. That's why you have to have the class established in the template, but any other attribute for the tag, whatever it be, you can basically just push it right through the attributes variable. And then, of course, if it's specifically to the content or the title, they have their own attributes array. Um, if this sounds a little too geeky for you, don't worry about it. You'll get used to it uh, when you start working with 7. Um, process functions can now be used for all theming hooks. 
there were certain functions in Drupal's theme layer that could only really affect, like adding variables, would only affect templates directly. So that was kind of like a, you know, kind of a downer sometimes, because you're like, oh, I want I to tweak the variables, but I don't have a template at all. I have everything running by a code through template PHP. Now in Drupal 7, we get to do all those tweaks to even variables, even if we don't have a single template inside of our theme, if it's all PHP logic. Uh, new theme functions now take a single argument, so every, uh, you know, um, theme underscore table, theme <laughs> underscore link, theme underscore block, all that stuff, now every function, every theme function has just one argument coming in called variables. So now that means things are a little bit more complex when it dives into the logic for a theme function, but from a programmer standpoint, this is actually much better because now I don't have to go and look up the signature for every theme uh, function that I'm overwriting. I know it's immediately just variables, and then of course as a developer I get to dig in and find out what those variables are. Um, before, I mean, if it was like the title and uh, the content, it would literally be you know, uh, an argument for each variable that came in. And that doesn't work when you're trying to scale out. Uh, if Drupal 7 wanted to add one whole new layer of complexity to the tables, the way tables are themed by default, and the way people overwrite it, uh, we basically lock ourselves in if we have multiple arguments. By running to this method of just one argument called variables, now Drupal 7 gets to not so much as get en enhanced features, but the API gets to grow and we don't have to wait for a whole new major version to come out. Uh, your function names must match the theme name. No more PHP template underscore blah. That's no longer allowed in your template PHP files. You have to have the prefix of your theme name. Okay. Uh, CSS and JavaScript, now you must specify them in the .info file. I didn't see, there was like an issue for this, uh, so I didn't get to read all the details because the issue was kind of long, um, and I need to drive out here and it takes a while. But um, basically, no more automatic style.css file automatically assumed by Drupal in your theme, and no more automatic script.js file automatically assumed for your theme as well. Uh, if you didn't know, these two files were looked for by Drupal, and Drupal just would assume you would have a style.css file um, if you had no style sheets declared in your theme. So technically now a theme can have no style sheets and it won't try to load an empty file. Drupal does pretty good about not loading an empty file when it's a style sheet or a JavaScript. Did I see a question, a hand raised? No? Okay. Yes, so the question was, what if I have style.css in my theme, you will just have to deliberately declare style.css. You wouldn't just let Drupal go out and assume and look up the file. But would I have to declare the includes from style.css? Uh, if you're using like at import in CSS, if you're using at import, you shouldn't have to do anything. But if you want Drupal to know, see it's another good thing too, if Drupal knows about every style sheet in your manifest file, Drupal can take that and compress it together with the performance features built in. So you will want to make sure that you declare them out anyway. But if you have CSS doing some at imports and looking up other CSS files, uh, I mean, that's just standard CSS. That's going to work just fine. Uh, more granular rendering of node and user templates. So now we have a couple, two new functions uh, in PHP, hide and render. So we can literally hide little components of a page and not have to kind of delete them with code, okay? Um, the hide will manage that just fine. And in fact, you could hide, 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 render, render, render. So, I mean, you can hide something previously and then render it later. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but maybe you do. So, so it show up in some other place. Well, yeah, I mean, if you want to hide it from the general content well and then render that little piece, you know, comments, maybe in a sidebar, this is what will let you do that, okay? Um, Carrie mentioned that RDFA is part of Drupal 7. If you don't know what that is, just imagine it makes your website really, 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 really geeky for search <laughs> engines. For, 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 yeah, I mean, you know, basically what happens is, and I'm gonna get geeky right now, if I had a Drupal website based on Planet of the Apes, I could use the RDFA feature 
to make my whole website kind of like a giant database repository, if you will, or almost like a giant web service. And people can query my website using RDFA protocols, uh, and I can actually respond to them and give them information right from my website. And it really doesn't look too much different from HTML. So this is pretty geeky stuff. Uh, government sites are using this. Um, so you can actually query like some census databases and stuff like that. If you at all care about doing mashups, RDFA, there's a good video from DrupalCon Boston, which is already now two years old, that shows how to do a maps mashup uh, with Drupal 7's RDF uh, uh, modules. So, it, I mean, it was like a mashup done in like six minutes. Uh, and it did plotting of a Google map with the attendance people uh, against a chart. Um, you know, where they came from. It was pretty neat, and again, it was like six minutes, whole mashup, uh, RDFA, really does a lot of that stuff. What does RDF stand for? Uh, resource definition? Resource format? description framework. Okay, resource description framework, type A, that's kind of important, it's kind of weird. Because um, then there's RDF that's just uh, kind of considered a big brother to RSS. Weird stuff like that. So anyway, um, if your theme wants to take advantage of RDFA and I definitely predict a lot of themes are going to go this way because it's a very simple change uh, in your page template files. But there's a few things key in here that has kind of slimmed down from the standard page TPL that we know today in Drupal 6. Uh, one of the key things that need to change is the doc type. It actually mentions that it's RDFA and then the DDT mentions RDFA. The languages, some of this stuff, these variables have been trimmed down. Um, I don't remember all of them. I don't even know what Girdle is. So I'll have to go look that up later. Is that in the start? Is that in the start? The you know, I haven't, I haven't double checked. I, I didn't notice myself, but I'm going to look. So the question was, is this change uh, done in the start theme? I'm going to go out on a limb and assume yes. You know, but we've got geeks and laptops, so somebody let me know tonight. So um, I'm done for tonight, part one again. These are the links that I would like to share with you. So drupal.org slash update slash theme slash six slash seven. This, I know it sucks, but whatever. Uh, this first link is actually the upgrade path documentation from taking your Drupal 6 theme to Drupal 7. Uh, a lot of the points I covered here are literally on that page. Um, there's even some code samples showing six to seven. So I would definitely keep you know, your RSS feeds looking at that page for sure. Um, also, if you're just getting into Drupal themes, uh, this tiny URL link actually jumps to my linden.com training, so you can check that out. And then uh, if anybody uses Dreamweaver or Eclipse, I have some free Drupal plugins for those uh, softwares available at Extendus. Question? Yes. If uh, Stark is based on Zen, is the Zen project continuing and what's the difference? Very good question. Um, so if the Stark project is based on Zen, what's happening to Zen? Zen, since Stark is already kind of slated in the core, the, the code's in there now, there's kind of like a feature freeze. So anything that the developers that help start want to add, they will be contributing back to Zen. So Zen already does have a seven development branch, and they will be continuing Zen on. You'll see theme frameworks come out for seven, like Fusion, uh, Grid960, everybody is looking to do a D7 version of that stuff. So Zen will still be a very viable option, 